Take 622. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Are you ready? We're, We're ready, ready to, to throw, throw it back. back. It's been nine seasons of the inside track on Making House Home. You've learned how to build wealth. How to navigate the ebbs and flows of the real estate market. How to create a healthy home. While becoming part of a community. We've helped over 2,380 families through the seasons of their lives, ensuring their home was more than just shelter from the weather. It was shelter to weather the storms of life. It's exciting to continue on the journey with you. Get ready to enjoy this episode as, as it's, it's one, one of our favorite, favorite episodes, episodes, hand selected from the last nine seasons to take you back before we take you forward into the new Life's Inside Track on February 5th. Welcome to the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker team. And today, of course, I'm Ken Decker, author of The Wealth Formula. And I have Jason and Caroline, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. And Jason and Caroline ran into me a couple years ago, maybe three. Time flies when you're having fun, right? Mm -hmm. You guys have a lot of fun. Because you're, you're in the band, right? Yes, yes, sir. And I heard that people in a band have a lot more fun than people that aren't. Well, I don't know I if we have know, more fun have than others. Fun. But... <laughs> <laughs> You've always been in the band or what? Yeah. Okay. It's been a while, yeah. yeah. All right, perfect. Um, so about three years ago, you got a hold of my book. And uh, so tell me, tell me, first of all, a little bit about yourselves other than being in a band. Well, you could tell us about that too. Yeah, tell sure. Us, tell us Ca about well, Caroline and I have been together 22 years. Okay, Two great. kids. Uh, we've been in the band together the whole time. Um, is that your only livelihood, is the yeah, band? Yeah. Well, and we have a recording studio. Okay. Yeah. So, but yes, music. So when things get lean, uh, we'll start teaching as well. But we try to make most of our money from gigging. So, okay. and we do, we play about 150 to 200 shows a year, every year for like the past 10 years. That's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. So do you do you have like uh, what do they call the guys that carry the equipment for you? Or you got roadies. No. Roadies. No, you're, you know, you're, roadies? you're looking at right them. Are you the bouncy? <laughs> no. <laughs> Luckily, we don't need. <laughs> okay. So where where would you normally play? Oh, we play all over. We play. We play. Well, we play blues fest, Ottawa blues fest. We play. Uh, we're playing West Fest this year. Uh, we play um, the Rainbow, the Atomic Rooster. Uh, the key storm in Brockville. We play in Kingston, so pretty much everywhere from Montreal to Ottawa to Kingston, okay. Toronto. Every now and uh, mm -hmm. now and again. Okay. How many members in your band? Three. Yeah. Three. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not a big band. No. no. Guitar no. player. Yeah. Drummer, singer, drummer, and bass singer. player. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And so you've been doing that for a lot of years. Yeah. 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 How'd you meet? How'd you meet each other? High school, skipping school. High school. Skipping we school. were. We were. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we've known each other for 30 years. So. 30 years? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. exciting. It's yeah. been a long time. <laughs> so we, we both um, sort of those kids that uh, fell through the cracks in the education system. We were, I wasn't really into sports and, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't, um, we didn't have a lot of friends at school. So we would end up meeting at the mall because we both like to sit at the mall and read books. And uh, <laughs> oh, okay. usually you go to school to read books, but okay, yeah, they, have all read books, okay. <laughs> they don't have coffee at the desk at school. So. Oh, that's probably the problem. Mm -hmm. If they'd make school a little more fun, yeah, kids might want to be in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And so, what's the name of your band? River City Junction. River City Junction. Mm -hmm. What kind of genre do you play normally? Uh, it's blues and, and retro rock. Retro yeah, rock. A little bit of Motown. Stuff a little like bit that. jazz. A little bit, yeah, a little, little bit jazzy yeah. influences as well, yeah. Awesome. Well, that's great. So how would people reach you if you wanted to hire you for a gig? Just go to rivercityjunction.com. Rivercityjunction.com. Yeah, dot com. Com. yeah. Cool. Okay. So you got two children. How old are your children? Yeah. Uh, 20, 20 and 18. 20 and 18. 20 and 18. Mm -hmm. Wow. Are they still in the house? Yeah. Yes. You haven't learned how to kick them out? Not yet. <laughs> Maybe watch that movie, Failure to Launch. <laughs> you can figure something out. Yeah. yeah. Okay, my kids are out. We're empty nesters. Oh, really? Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Still enjoying having them at home? I do. Yeah. Okay. I do, yeah. Is it's, it, it's, it's, it's tough sometimes, um, but 
overall, yeah, they're good, good kids. Okay. And Looking so the, forward to your second book. Yeah. <laughs> going about, yeah, finances for your kids. Mm-hmm. And so the um, third member of your band? Tom. His name's Tom. It's yeah. Tom. He's, he's not a family member? Is yeah, he lives with us, yeah. Oh, well, he he's, he's not a family member, but he, oh, but he, he does kind live of with is. You. Yeah. Well, he, <laughs> okay. yeah, he's, he's been with us for 10 or 12 years now, so okay. he's... Okay. Kids call him Uncle Tom or what? No. Just Tom. No, just Tom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so tell me about your uh, finances, because you're here to talk about the wealth formula because it had some change in your life yeah. oh, after yeah. you read it three years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me about life before the wealth formula. Okay, well, if we go all the way back to the beginning when we first started dating. Sure. Um, it was like uh, welfare and food stamps. It was very difficult. <laughs> really. Well, you laugh now. But you, oh, yeah. yeah. Were you laughing then? No, no I wasn't no, laughing then, but okay. I, I... It was tough. And um, when, we, when we finally... We, we met a bank manager in Hudson who um, was kind enough to help us. Um, her name is Jacqueline Loiselle. Okay, and that's just, Hudson's just off of Montreal. In area. Quebec, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. We, yeah. And she helped us get our finances in order, helped us buy our first house. So when we moved out here, um, we had no jobs. We had no friends. We didn't know anybody out here. We just bought the house because it was really close to a school that the kids could walk to. And it was strategically placed between Montreal, Ottawa, and Kingston. So okay. we could drive anywhere to play music okay. to make money. And so what, where, where is that roughly? Cardinal. In Cardinal. In Cardinal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that's close to highways. Yeah. 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 Good. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so we spent pretty much everything we had to get the house. Mm-hmm. And we didn't even have our next month's mortgage payment, but we managed to make it work. Um, our... Second year, I think we had no heat because we weren't making enough money at the time. Oh goodness. So and that that was still you were in the music industry mm-hmm. at that, at that yeah, point. Yeah, trying to tough tough to make a living yeah. in the arts, right? Oh <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it can it was, be. It, it can be. Before, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Until yeah. people find out, you know, who you are, and, and mm-hmm. you know, your name gets around, and yeah, it, mm. it's it's definitely tough. You're building a business. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. And, That's, you know, and I find with real estate agents, you know, I have a lot of real estate agents that work with us and they tend to be people persons and they're not business people. Yeah. 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 So I got to teach that aspect of it. And I'm sure it's the same in the arts. Exactly. They're so. arts people. They're not business people first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you got to learn that part of the. And some of them, unfortunately, aren't people people either. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, which, we're we're lucky like that because we are. We're, we mm-hmm. love people. We love talk, meeting people, talking to people, hanging out with people, getting to know their their story and stuff. Yeah. But you know, Spreading a lot of artists love. are you know a little recluse, a little yeah. bit recluse, and they and they'll go up on stage to perform because it's it's what they practice for, right? Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like the, they're comfortable with that, but they're comfortable with that, but not really the one on one meeting with people. No, not mm-hmm. so much. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, but you guys, you're cool with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're even cool in front of uh, cameras and radio and all that stuff. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. good. All right. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so, you're, um, so you started out really rough. Now, what was it like three years ago when you got the, the wealth formula? What, what was your life situation then? Still in the same house that you oh, bought? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 we're Been still there. there. For 10 years. Yeah. But you had heat? Oh, yeah. yeah. At that yeah, point? Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah. Because... <laughs> Heat's important in the uh, winter. Yeah. How do you important. handle that with kids? Well, that they was, that it was a little bit rough. Point, was it? We, had, well, we had space heaters. Yeah, we still had electricity. We yeah. just, oh. uh, yeah. Was it oil heated or? Yeah. Gas, yeah. actually. Gas, like, yeah, natural gas. Natural yeah. gas? Yeah. yeah. So we, we basically all, uh, we closed off, a, a we have a pretty big house. Mm-hmm. So we closed off a portion of the house and mm-hmm. we all lived in basically the kitchen and the den. Okay. And, um, and. We had space heaters. We had space heaters. So at nighttime, everybody (laughs) got a space heater in their room. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it wasn't uh, dreadful. It was... Sounds like my childhood. Yeah, you had to just... (laughs) Yeah, exactly, you know. Tough it out a little. I had no heat in my bedroom. I had an electric blanket. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It kept you warm. And then uh, the second year we lived in that... We had a resort and we lived... And it wasn't winterized. So mm. we had like a, it was a oil fired heater in the kitchen 
and a fireplace, and that was our heat. And so wow. when you went to bed, you yeah, you load up the fireplace. Well, you t- turn up the <laughs> you turn up the the electric blanket and get undressed as fast as you could and get it mm-hmm. <laughs> underneath it. But it, it was okay. Yeah. And finally, we built a house that had heat, so that was okay. Too. That was it makes you appreciative better, yeah. of what you have. I yeah. Think, right. Um, so. Yeah, and yeah. and so um, back again t- three years ago. Tell me about. Uh, did you have bills that weren't paid, or yes. what was your oh, yeah. situation like? Uh, well, up until I guess probably maybe two or three years ago is about when it started to turn around. I think we got the book from you about four years ago. Oh, was it four years ago? Yeah, it might and, have been four and I and I read the book uh, right away, and I started implementing everything that I could. Um, you must have got it hot, hot off the press because I yeah, just you, printed I think, it yeah. right out of your car. Actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, it would have been hot off the press. Yeah. I just had it printed four years ago. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I actually bought it on uh, iBooks, and I have it on my iPad too, so I can read oh, it whenever I want. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, um, or sorry, not it's on Kindle because I, yeah. I couldn't I couldn't find it on uh, iBooks. So. Yeah, no, it's not on iBooks, but that's a good point. Yeah. Maybe I it on iBooks. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so you know, it was not easy to implement uh, everything uh, because limited resources, um, and also in our case, um, you know, it's not just consumer debt that we were carrying, but it's more. As, as a matter of fact, it's not really. It wasn't really consumer debt at all. It's business debt: guitars, mm-hmm. amplifiers, recording equipment, stuff like that, and mm-hmm. so and and a lot of it. You know, okay. like. 30 grand at a time at any given time we were always having to pay all kinds of you know heavy duty bills just to try to stay afloat Mm -hmm. so but as time went on and we uh, we finally got the bills under control then the money that we invested in all of that equipment keeps us employed Mm -hmm. and now now you just have to Maintain and upgrade it once in a while, yeah. or whatever yeah. mm-hmm. piece here or there, yeah. rather than buy it all of it. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. So you you said that the the wealth formula changed your life a little bit, the way you process. What um, first of all, what what do you love about the book? Maybe both of you can answer that question. What do you love about the book? It's easy to understand. Yeah. Really, really easy to understand. Um, really easy. Um, it sort of it sort of masks the financial aspects and and makes uh, makes it just easy for you to absorb the information without actually thinking about numbers and stuff you know and for me that was really good my mom uh, was an accountant oh, and so she always tried to teach me how to do my taxes and every time she talked numbers I was like oh my god <laughs> you know yeah, and, but but in the book, it's like real life examples that everybody can relate to, mm-hmm. and and so you know you're like oh Simplified. oh I could do that, you know. But I'll tell you actually the the thing that I loved the most, and and I'm not sure um, I don't remember if it was covered, and it might be from studying other things as well. Yeah. Um, the idea of keeping. A certain amount of money saved up, I think, is Mm -hmm. an idea that's foreign to a lot of people who come from no money, right? Like the emergency cushion. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah. but it's more than just an emergency cushion because what happens, I study stuff like the secret and manifesting what you want. Same as like when you pray, you know what I mean? Like you, uh, Mm -hmm. you, you call into existence what you focus upon, right? Mm -hmm. And when you've got money on hand you don't feel poor anymore Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it changes the way you think it changes your paradigm you go from being somebody who is without to somebody who has Mm -hmm. right you know and being able to like to have enough cash to say you know i've got all these credit card bills but if i had to i could just pay them all off right now and they'd be gone Mm -hmm. it changes the way you see everything and therefore changes the way that you interact with it all, you know, mm-hmm. which is amazing. 
Yeah, there's a good saying that says abundance is not something that you acquire, it's something that you tune into. Mm-hmm. You tune into abundance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So, Wayne Dyer. Yeah. Is that Wayne Dyer? Yes. You know, it's interesting. You you talked about the the, the secret. You obviously mm-hmm. watched yeah, the movie The it. Secret. Many uh, times. <laughs> um, Lisa Nichols is one of the ladies on the movie The Secret. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's actually I've hired her to be uh, that really? team's coach. No, no way. Yeah, wow. yeah, we actually brought That's her to awesome. Ottawa. I mean, you missed that a couple a uh, couple months ago. Yeah. We had Lisa Nichols in Ottawa speaking. Oh. And her latest book is Abundance Now. Is mm. what, and nice. it's and it's about living from abundance rather than scarcity. Yeah. Because yeah. when you try to hang on to things. It's a mindset, right? Yeah. Like fear. It, yeah, it's fear and we don't have anything. Mm-hmm. It's not that we become reckless. I think we just become peaceful. I think it was the way yeah. God designed mm-hmm. us. It yeah. is. You know, absolutely. There's scripture that says, um, in the house of the wise are storehouses of fine oils. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and it's about not spending everything you get. And we live in a culture where Hey, you're not living if you're not spending everything you're earning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? And and so it's an oxymoron because that actually crushes your life it compared does. to yeah. living with some abundance and some a little bit of a safety net and feeling good about things. Yeah. So if you're just joining us, you're listening to the inside track on real estate with the Decker team. And I'm uh got the lovely guests, Jason and Caroline. And they're discussing their life and how it changed after reading The Wealth Formula that I authored about four years ago. It took me several years to, to write it uh, because writing's not my full-time gig. <laughs> <laughs> I sell real estate. <laughs> but uh, it's funny, you know, they say if you want to get something done, give it to someone who's busy, mm-hmm. right? And so when I go away on holidays, I write. Because then I have the creative juices, and yeah. you know, and I don't know. You probably do you write songs? I do. Oh yeah, you do. Yeah, mm-hmm. and do you find you need to give some some space for creativity? Absolutely. Yeah. How, how about every I, day? Every day you write? Not oh. necessarily write, but every day space is given to creativity and quiet reflection and okay. and and praying and and just being. Mm-hmm. You know, right. just <laughs> beautiful. beautiful. And yeah. Now this is a question that just came to me. Did you find your creativity change when your financial situation changed? In other words, was there a lightness? Was there a change in your Absolutely. music you were writing? What, what happened yeah. to you guys? I, I'm. You know. I'm. I think it's possible. Sorry, I know you were gonna. Oh, go ahead. Um, I think if we go back a little bit, when Caroline and I first started writing music, we were living in Montreal and we were playing um, a, a pretty heavy style of music. Um, yeah. We were young. young yeah. And, and, and <laughs> the, scene, the, the scene at the time heavy in Montreal rock, yeah. was pretty, pretty heavy. Okay. Um, and, and we were influenced a lot by it. And, and even though we were writing like our music, we always tried to write stuff that was, uh, that had a point that was relevant you know, mm-hmm. but but we were talking a lot then about what we saw wrong with the world. We were focusing on the stuff that we didn't like. Okay. And then we went and played a blues gig for, in Hudson again. Um, the art gallery on Harwood uh, hired us to uh, do an art vernissage. And I had to actually hire a couple of other players because the guys, other guys, like Caroline and I both come from blues. I started out as a folk guitar player and I studied classical in college. And um, so, but the other guys in our band were, they were just too heavy. We couldn't do the gig with them. So we hired a couple other players and we went and played this blues show and people were dancing and laughing and having the most amazing time. And when we finished playing, we just felt our like hearts like exploding with joy, you know. Mm-hmm. And we just looked at each other in the car and we're like, "It's we're done. Yeah, <laughs> we're done with the heavy stuff. We're yeah. moving over here." And I think, yeah, okay. I think when we shifted our focus to writing music that focuses on love. what we want, you know, love and peace and understanding, and and some Self of our stuff growth. is even, you know, we have a couple of songs that are about finding God and finding, you know, your way in the world. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, I think that when we started focusing on that, um, 
I think that actually was the catalyst for the change, and I think the change probably came from that. Okay. You know? From that change. Yeah. Awesome. I think so, anyways. Okay. You know? How about you, Karen? I agree with everything he says, and I think because... <laughs> <I'm embarrassed>. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> but I think also because we started, you know, shifting our focus onto not the problems, but the solutions... Mm -hmm. And then we met the right people, and you came along, gave us the book that helped us help our finances as well. So that was probably the last missing key, you know? Okay. So, yeah. And everything just seems to happen like magic now. Yeah. Okay. It's crazy. And so what did you learn from the book? I know you said uh, it was... You could absorb it because it was real life experience. It's it's a story book, really. We we hide the financial things yeah. inside the story, which is right? brilliant. Yeah. And I, how did that? What did you learn that started to change the way you did life? One of the things was how to pay off your debts. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Focusing on the smallest amount first, mm -hmm. and paying that, that off as quickly as possible, and then and focusing on, on the, the next, next one. Yeah. That was key. Yeah. Was that key? That yeah. was key. It changed your mind. It really was. It was like, oh, yeah, you it's see not such progress. an insurmountable task right. anymore. It's, it was simplified. It was like, all you got to do is this, and then <laughs> save some money on the side, <laughs> yeah. and once you accumulate enough, you pay that one off, and then you mm -hmm. start over again. And I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. Okay. So thank you. And also, that. you know... Um, putting a little extra paying yourself as if mm -hmm. you're one of your bills saving some mm -hmm. as well yeah but also um the part about giving back mm -hmm. i think was cool too because that creates a flow you're you're giving and you're mm -hmm. receiving and it just creates a real flow right. you know so you're not a reservoir you're a river Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. exactly. More yeah. can flow in as it's flowing out. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And we don't necessarily, like, we don't uh, attend church because, like I said, it's a, it, it, well, maybe now that we've found one that. <laughs> 430 is pretty good for us. Yeah, <laughs> morning's not good for you. So, well, no, especially if you're doing mostly late night gigs, right? We are, and we so, are. Always. Yeah. yeah. We rarely get to bed before five in the morning. Yeah. Really, by the time you get home mm -hmm. for the past 20 years. That would make it tough well, to go to a nine so or much. 10 o'clock service, wouldn't it? It yeah. would. Okay. Well, I'll have to get you that name of the church in Mantic. That's yeah. at four thirty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, what's like life like after reading the Wealth Formula and implementing a lot of the things that are in that book? What's the life like for you? It's it's just more. Um, I guess I'm more at peace, really, because of all of mm -hmm. you know the the financial burden being lifted. So. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you don't feel financially burdened anymore. I don't feel I feel I feel successful now. Okay. I still carry debt, but um it's I don't paid it, off. <laughs> it doesn't it, it gets paid and and it's because I choose, you know, if I if I uh like for example, let's say I get a a, a contract uh to do a recording session and I want to buy a new piece of gear for the recording session, I can put it on my card, but I know that the session's going to pay for it and I can mm -hmm. pay it off after, you know? Okay. And so you feel more like uh, in control of your finances now, mm -hmm. you know? And so therefore more in control of your whole life. Yeah. You know? I think a lot of people, you said, you know, your, your mother was an accountant and, and that numbers, as soon as you said, she talked numbers to you, glazed over, mm -hmm. you're like, shut it down. Sorry, I'm not mom. interested. <laughs> well, I think that's just, you know, numbers juice me. And actually, when I was in high school, English was my lowest mark. Wow. That was now, my, uh, my favorite yeah. subject. Is that your lowest as well? No, no, no. Oh, math no. was. Oh, math was. Okay, see. Yeah, math and science. We're artists. I was like way up there. And English, it was just too, um, too free-flowing. Yeah. There were no rules. Well, there were rules around grammar but there were no rules about how you could create something and mm -hmm. what you took from what you read and and i was driving me crazy because they'd tell you to write these 500 word essays on you know what you cut out of the book or something and i, I couldn't do it i hated it <laughs> but you know and then you go and write a sixty thousand word book. <laughs> how did that happen yeah <laughs> it's only god yeah. it's only god it is. god downloaded that 
Yeah, so that's awesome. I'm really glad you, you came and uh, and met with us. And so you have a recruiting, recording studio yes, as well. We do, yeah. Yes, So if someone wanted to record at your studio, yeah. do you hire that out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, and how would they reach you again? Uh, it's ToneKingRecords.com. ToneKingRecords.com. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they just go online there and say, yep. like, the book a time? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. For sure. And you, and you said you teach a little bit, but only yep. when you're slow. Yeah. Teach, teaching's, <laughs> well, teaching's, not, teaching's not your... I do take on a couple of students, um, even when we're busy, um, but only older students that I know are going to take what I show them and, and run with it and work it. Yeah, I'd be a really you know. bad student for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a bass guitar and an electric guitar uh, a year ago, and <laughs> I've played it like twice. Yeah. <laughs> and playing it means like strumming a couple of strings. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so. You only need to do about 20 minutes a day, but you've got to be you religious have to be able to about to the do 20, that 20 minutes, minutes. A day. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because it looks really good in my room. I've got a creative room. <laughs> my, my wife creates in there. She paints in there, and I'm supposed to do guitar stuff in there. But so far, I haven't spent enough time in there. I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, for our listeners, if if you would like to come to a wealth building workshop where I talk about a lot of the principles that we have in our um, in my book, and maybe pick up a book, an autographed copy of the book, uh, the next session is February 9th. It's 6 to 8.30. It's in Ottawa. You can call us at 613-860-4663 and uh, register for that if somebody wants to come and get some great learning. There's even some new stuff that's not in the book that I share at the event. Uh, And then we've got a couple properties I'd like to highlight. And, of course, an investment property because, you know, the book's all about building wealth. Uh, We have a property in Kempville on Rubin Street. It's actually a duplex and a fourplex on one piece of property. So it's very unique because you don't usually find two properties, two, two buildings on one property. Uh, that's listed at $599 and has a 7.5 cap rate. Now, do you know what a cap rate is? That's the cap on the amount of uh, tax interest? that you pay or interest you pay it, on the it, mortgage? It isn't. But, no. but good guess. That's a very good guess. <laughs> so I, I don't think I got into cap rate in my book because it gets kind of technical. But really what it is is if, if you paid cash for that building, it would net 7.5% income for you Wow. Every, you know, every year. That's without capital appreciation. 7.5% on your initial investment, you mean? On your, on your total, like if you paid cash for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what the cap rate says. So the amount of net income that the building provides would provide you, if you paid the 600000 cash, you'd get 7.5% on your 600000 Wow. Now, as you know in the book, we talk about leverage. So you don't put the six hundred; You put maybe uh, you know 30% down, and then uh, you're going to make all the money on the leverage part too. So very exciting. So that's a great investment. And then I have a rental property if anybody wants to start a business. Uh, $1,400 a month for about 1,100 square feet. It's in Kempville, uh, right on the main street on Prescott Street. So uh, if you want to start a business, that might be a great place. Or if you've got a business, you're looking for a spot, that would be a great place. Well, this has been a great show. I'm so happy you came out and uh, drove out to to visit. Uh, Thanks for joining us on the Inside Track on Real Estate with the Decker team. Make sure to mark your calendars to join us on February 5th as we continue to move forward on the new Life's Inside Track.